What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're just going to kind of have some fun with the extensions Curveloft and Slicer. We're going to create kind of a parametric looking tower. Um, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like this video, please consider supporting me at the link down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to combine the two extensions, Curveloft and Slicer. And uh, I will link to both of those extensions down below. We've talked about both of these fairly in depth in the past, but I wanted to kind of create them to create kind of a parametric looking tower and then slice it into its individual pieces in order to create kind of a new look. So you could take this and you could apply this to a lot of different things, but I guess this is more of just a concept video than anything else. So the first thing we're gonna do so we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a circle. So I'm just going to tap the C key and then just draw a circle. It doesn't really matter what size it is or anything like that. Then we're going to come in and we're just going to draw one or two arcs along the circle. So again, doesn't really matter how big they are. This is basically going to make up our shape. And then I'm going to erase out these segments. So tap the E key to activate the eraser and drag across those. Well now what I want to do is I want to start making copies of these moving up because what we're going to do is we're going to use Curveloft to basically loft a surface or create a surface along a series of these shapes. So to start off what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. And when I do that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just rotate this a little bit. Um, and uh, it doesn't really matter how much you rotate it in this case. Um, we're just kind of trying to create more of an organic type shape. So something that doesn't necessarily, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to conform to a certain angle or anything like that. We're more just creating a series of these that just kind of rotate and change just a little bit. So I'm just gonna take this one and I'll just rotate it back. So basically what we have is we have a series of four of these shapes. And so to start off, we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna test and see how this is gonna look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna inside curve aloft, I'm gonna activate the option for loft by spline. And so when I click on the option for loft by spline, you can see what this is gonna do is this is gonna come in here and this is actually gonna loft a face along this. And you do have to be careful with this because the more faces you create and the more complex you get, um, the harder time it has um, mapping these lines so that they're smooth. So like for example, if you would come in here and let's say, I don't know if this is gonna work or not honestly, but let's say I came in here and each one of these had rotated more. So let's say they had all rotated something like 40 degrees. Maybe I'll rotate this one back just to give you kind of an idea. Well, now if I come in here and I run curve aloft, you can see how this is gonna struggle a lot more to figure out exactly where those lines go. You can see how things start getting really weird right here. So the more turn you get, the harder this is gonna be to make it work. Um, I think you can mess around with where those lines go, but just in general, um, just you probably wanna keep your rotation to a minimum when you're trying to do something like this. But now, because I want to make this a little bit taller, I'm just going to make a copy of all of these using the move tool in copy mode. So I'm just going to click and drag across this. I'm just going to use the move tool. I'm going to tap the control key to activate copy mode and I'm going to click on this point. You can see how that le lets me create a copy. And so when I create a copy, I'm just going to move straight up and down on my blue axis and I'm just going to move that copy up here. So now I have kind of the general makeup of my tower. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select all of these and I'm just gonna run loft by spline again. You can see how I get a nice smooth mapping of my different lines in here when I do this because those turns weren't super complicated. And you really wanna keep this kind of simple anyway because in order for slicer to work, this is gonna to need to be a solid and the more turn you put in here, um, it just doesn't come out as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click off to the side to create this face. So you can see how basically what this did is this created a face based on all of these different shapes that we have in here. And if you wanted to, you could also come in and actually you could probably scale some of these up a little bit. So you could scale this one out. You could probably scale this one out. Again, I mean, we wanna be a little bit mild with what we're doing. Um, we don't wanna create any gigantic 
changes again because it might mess up your mapping but you can get a little bit creative in here with what you can do in order to kind of adjust the different sizes so and I'm just using the scale tool I'm just double clicking on this face tapping the S key and then I'm actually holding the control key to scale these about center so now you've got a little bit of size variation in here as well we'll come back and we'll run loft by spline one more time so you can see how you have the same shape but it's more interesting now because those pieces kind of scale in and out And I'm gonna go ahead and click the button to finalize this shape and so now what we need to do is we need to make a solid out of this and a solid just means that there's no holes in it so if something was a solid like let's say basically the best way to describe something being solid is if you were to fill it up with water no no water would come out of any holes so we need that in order for slicer to work and so we're gonna go ahead and move this off to the side and when you move it off to the side you're gonna notice that basically what you don't have is you don't have the ends in here and so when you move it off to the side, go ahead and select your shape, but then hold the shift key and select these two faces as well. Now you're gonna be able to move all of this over here and it all kind of stays in place. That way it's really easy for us to go ahead and make this into a solid. And so in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is explode this face because it's in a group right now. And so even though it looks solid, if I was to go up into my entity info, this is just telling me that it's a group. So we wanna drag a mouse across this, right click and click explode. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna explode this out into a face instead of a group. And then we'll go ahead, and this is actually probably a pretty good time to reverse all your faces so the correct face is facing outward. So just right click on there and click reverse faces. And what that did is that reversed these so that the front face was facing out instead of the back. And then all we have to do is drag your mouse along this, right click and click make group. And what you're gonna find, assuming you didn't make your geometry too complicated, is that this comes in as a solid group. So now we could do a few different things with it. We could 3D print it, um, we could, um, and there's probably some things you'd have to do in order to make that fully work, but we can come in here and slice it up using slicer. There's a lot of different things we can do, but in this case, we wanna go ahead and slice it. And so the first thing I like to do is do kind of a sample slice. And the reason for that is because this comes in and creates a lot of geometry. So, and really the very first thing you should do before you do anything with slicer is save your model. And in fact, it's gonna require that. So once you've saved your model and you come back in here, you may in fact want to make a copy of this whole thing just so you have it in case something goes wrong with the one you're trying to slice. But what I like to do first, because this creates a lot of geometry, is I like to do a test slice. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure tool and I'm going to figure that this is going to be 52 feet high. And then I'm going to run slicer. So I'm going to come over here and click on the slicing tool. And you can see what this is gonna do is this is gonna let me set the spacing and thickness of the pieces that are created. And right now, the spacing of those pieces is set to two inches. So that means that you're gonna create a lot of different stuff in here when you first run this. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this to something like one foot. Because if you remember, this is 52 feet high, so this is only going to create 52 slices instead of like a million slices. And you can adjust the thickness on those as well if you want to. So you can kind of mess around with that and say if they're one foot slices, we can go ahead and set these at two inches thick. But we're going to turn off our references and we're going to turn off flatten. Those are great for if you're trying to flatten everything and like CNC route this or something, but we're not doing that. So we're going to say no so that this will run faster. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to slice this along the Z axis every foot. And so I can kind of take a look at this and make sure that this is giving me the slices that I want. So, and I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks right now. So I'm gonna do an undo, a control Z, and I'm gonna do another test where I slice it along the X axis and the Z axis. And we're just gonna set this to be the same way and it's gonna take a little bit longer in this case because it's gonna run this. Um, it's basically gonna create double the amount of slices that it was creating before. And you can see how my SketchUp is sitting here trying to figure all that out right now. So you can see how you can kind of come in here and take a look and see if you like the way that this looks. So in this case, I'm not a super huge fan of the way that looks, but it looks okay. 
And so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the vertical slices in order to finish this off. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to run this and I'm going to set my spacing at something like four inches and I'm going to leave my thickness at one inch. Um, may and we're just going to come in here, we're going to click OK, and we're going to kind of finalize this that way. So, and you can adjust the spacing however you want. Um, in this case, I'm trying to create something that kind of lets the light through to give, give you a little bit more of a 3D effect. But you can see how that allowed me to come in here and create this kind of parametric shape. And if you don't like the color that this comes in, you can come in and apply a different material to it. And the other thing is, depending on what you're trying to achieve, sometimes these edges come in with a lot of extra geometry on here. So you can see how these have all of these extra little edge geometry pieces. If you don't like those and you want to get rid of those, you can go down to the Soften Edges tool. And I'm just going to get in here and I'm just going to do a Control A to select all of them. So I double clicked inside the group, I selected all. And then uh, you can just click this button and kind of drag this. And you can see how all of those, all of those lines will hide as you click and drag this soften edges function. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.